I've been asked to talk about the difference between mythical beings and angels. And in a way there isn't always a difference because angel is basically just another word for messenger. And there are of course many spirits of light who carry messages and give advice and bring energies and sometimes healing energies to various people and various beings. And power animals can do this, uh, other spirits can do this, also mythical spirits can do this. In the typical sense that we now understand angels as being manifestations of the divine, which are um, in a way uncorrupted. Um, in that case mythical beings would not be considered angels. So if we look at the nature of um, mythical being, it is very similar in a way to, you could say, the, a god or a goddess. It is a conglomerate of energies, which is self-conscious, but it has its source, you could say, the essence of it is not really from a very high vibration, but from a much lower vibration. So the big advantage of working with these mythical beings is you don't get damaged. So it is not like when you are in the presence of an angel that your energy body starts to yeah, burn away um, or other yeah, frightening occurrences happen to you. Um, most of these mythical beings have uh, a more complex energy than a power animal, um, but they're also less powerful than a god or a goddess, also the presence or the contact with a god or a goddess can be quite overwhelming. Um, so you could say they're in a way medium cat category, like not as overwhelming as a god or a goddess, but also usually more impressive than a normal spirit or a power animal would be. Also their message, as we discussed, is often a message which is a little bit more uh, complex. One special type of um, mythical beings which I want to discuss are in a way the, the constructs. Because many things arise more or less naturally, but some things can also be constructed similarly to a golem. You create a form, you fill it with energy and you give it a command. So it is more similar to yeah, what we would now term a robot. And some of these yeah, constructs can also take the form of a mythical being, but they have, in a way, almost no consciousness and usually very only one mission and not really well-developed personality. Um, and in the same way they're programmed, they can be reprogrammed. So these things can be used as messengers and they are used by messengers, by yeah, various uh, mages and uh, people like that. So they are more often known in the form of a homunculus, uh, which is literally a, a small man uh, or an imp. So they're generally not huge, very impressive, very large beings, but they're more used to carry out acts within the astral world so that the mage doesn't have to actually project all the time. So it is generally created for simple tasks like bring me this energy, fetch me that energy, uh, keep an eye on this person, and warn me if such and so happens with, uh, with my house. So they're usually used for relatively simple tasks and given also relatively simple instructions. Um, the art of creating uh, such a being is a little bit tricky because uh, you have to get the balance just right, or otherwise it will disintegrate in a shorter or longer time. Or it will, in a way, create a photonegative of itself, so that the balance is not upset. Um, there's also the additional problem if you create something which is linked to you, and you have the tendency to repress your own dark side, you will tend to press your dark side into 
uh, your construct and this construct will in a way start to manifest your dark side you will in a way have different form to your own demon to your own sins to your own evil and this can be of course very dangerous because if your dark side is actually bigger stronger more powerful than your light side you will have created yeah in a way uh, an enemy which you cannot defeat so this is an art which is best only started when you're uh, enlightened or around the, there in your uh, in your consciousness to do it safely um, as is obvious from what I've said is also that the will is very different in such a being than the will of the, of the creator so with an angel there is only one will the will of the creator and the angel itself is just another form for that will to manifest itself so rather than manifesting as um, I don't know uh, Gabriel it could manifest itself in the form of Michael or Raphael or whatever form is most suited to that will um, so the angels can be seen as the many different embodiments of the divine will um, a mythical being is usually more an embodiment of yeah, the place um, so also the place can have different forms can have different embodiments so a landscape angel or a landscape diva can also take many different shapes many different forms or uh, sometimes also morph into different forms and including that of mythical animals so it is most often a nature spirit which you will encounter but it can also be a very magical being which is used to working with different elements and therefore also finds such a form to be more suitable to its nature but unlike yeah, angels they are very much um, in a way defined or trapped by their nature, by the form that they inhabit. So I hope that this has explained it a little bit how the uh, position is of the mythical being and how it is quite different from an angel and even a deity.